Alright, hello ladies and gentle stoners, and welcome to part 10 of my Division series. My name is Casey, and today we will be doing all of the side quests in the Garment District. Uh, I did run into one problem where my game crashed while I was recording, and it didn't save that part of the video. And due to the online nature of this game, I'm not able to redo those couple of missions. It was just a security encounter and the first two parts of the Michael Dufresne missing person quest. Uh, I have faith that you'll be able to do those without video guidance though. <laughs> and aside from that, uh, we'll be talking about the security skills and the differences between some of the primary weapon types that we can use. So to start off, we have the Ballistics Shield ability. This will equip your character with a portable riot shield, but while you're using the shield, you can only fire your sidearm, which is usually a pistol. You can find uh, shotguns, but for the most part, they're going to be pistols and revolvers. The first mod is called Reactive Targeting. Uh, it's lighter and stronger than the normal shield, and it will also pulse any enemy who shoots it. The second is the Assault Shield mod. Uh, this will increase the damage, knockback, accuracy, and reload speed of your sidearm. And the third is Kinetic Breaker, which converts a bit of the damage that it takes into health for you. The second skill in the security tree is called Smart Cover. It will enhance all of the cover in an area, a circle area around you. So when you use it, uh, you'll gain increased damage and defense when you're actually like using the cover. And the first mod for it is called Trapper. So that makes hostiles using the cover, uh, they'll deal less damage and they'll take more damage. And you can launch the smart cover like a sticky grenade. And the next mod is Recharger, which will provide healing and cooldown reduction for any allies using the marked cover, uh, in addition to the regular increased damage and defense. And the last mod is Concealment, which will prevent you from being pulsed by enemy players. Uh, it will also cause anyone you shoot to become pulsed. And the last skill is called Mobile Cover, which uh, creates a little wall for one person to take cover behind. Unlike normal cover, this wall has its own health bar and it will be destroyed eventually. You can deactivate it yourself. Uh, the first mod for it is called Extension. It increases the size of the cover to fit two people. And it'll also increase the size of the health bar so it can take significantly more damage. The second mod, uh, Blast Shield, will explode forward when you turn it off yourself, uh, causing damage to enemies in front of it. The last mod is called Countermeasures, and it will cause you to deal increased damage while you're using the cover. It'll also it will also make you immune to being pulsed. So uh, on to gun types, uh, let's go over three different types of primary weapons that you can get. There's uh, SMGs, or submachine guns, uh, LMGs, or light machine guns, and assault rifles. For the most part, I've been using assault rifles in these videos. Uh, I do also have an LMG equipped right now. Uh, assault rifles are probably the most well-rounded and versatile of the gun types, but they don't always have the highest bullet damage. Now, if you if you look at your gun menu, you'll see uh, two different stats on your gun called DPS and damage. Uh, for the most part, you can ignore the DPS stat. It's just a rough estimate of how much damage you'll do in a second. Uh, it's pretty much only practical use in this game is giving you bragging rights with your friends. The most effective way in 
to deciding the most effective way to decide what weapon to use is actually like looking at all the different stats, comparing the two side by side. <laughs> and so assault rifles usually have the most range out of the guns that you can find, except for snipers or marksman rifles. Uh, their clip size is in the middle range. Uh, you won't find an assault rifle that has 100 bullets in the magazine, but they probably won't have less than 30 either. It's definitely the best weapon to use if you haven't decided on a certain playstyle yet, and they will generally go well with almost any character build. And next we have LMGs. Uh, they don't have the range of the assault rifle, and they'll typically do a little bit less damage as well. The upside to an LMG is they have huge clips. Massive. Bigger than any other guns I've seen. I've seen some LMGs that have a clip size of over 200 bullets, which is crazy. Uh, it's a good gun type to use if you want to lay down suppressing fire, if you're being pushed back against a wall and you need to advance. Uh, it does have some longer reload times that you'll have to deal with. <coughs> Since the clips are so big, it's only fair. And so, it's when you suppress an enemy, you may have noticed the white arrow that appears over top of their, their head. That's the indicator that they have been suppressed. They won't get up while the, the arrow is there, so it's a good time if you're behind cover, you can move up and gain ground on them. Or if you have friends, you can let you can keep shooting to keep a group of enemies suppressed while your teammates move in from the side to get a better vantage point or something. The last type of gun I want to talk about is SMGs. They have the shortest range out of the other guns. Um, besides a shotgun, of course, uh, but what they, they lack in distance, they definitely make up for with high damage and quick reload speed. Their magazines are often smaller than the other guns. Uh, they usually only have about 20 bullets, but they can have some that are on, on par with assault rifles, around like 30 to 40. Now obviously, due to the random nature of this game, you're bound to find some weapons that don't follow these guidelines that I've been talking about. So I'd, that's why I tried not to be too, too specific about any numbers. But uh, for the most part, they will kind of adhere to what I've been saying. Alright, so we are doing uh, an arms deal disruption mission. Now, I don't... I've no... Yeah, I don't think I've ever failed one of these missions. Uh, the guys generally are all trying to get to these boxes that we've marked for the JTF to come get. And they will kneel down in front of it and start poking around, but I, they've never survived long enough to finish whatever they're doing, so I don't actually know what it is they're trying to do. For the most part, when you're doing side missions, I tend not to run out of ammo, since uh, bad guys will drop ammo. It looks like a white line, like it would be an item, but you don't actually have to hold square to pick anything up. It'll just throw ammo or grenades into your backpack. Now, I would always recommend using any restock chests you come across. It's never good to run out of ammo. And so this is when I was going to go do the security uh, checkpoint mission, but unfortunately my game did crash while I was recording. As I explained earlier, it didn't save the video at all, 
Now, I could, uh, join one of my friend's games who hasn't completed that mission yet, and I can re-record them if anybody really needs to see them, but they're really not that difficult, so... And the other one was, uh, this Michael Dufresne missing person. Uh, I missed out on showing you part one and two, and those are the only three actual side quests that I didn't get to show you guys, so it's not a lot of content that we missed. Uh, I decided not to actually go and redo them and put them in this video because it ended up being 25 minutes long anyway. I figure nobody's really watching 10 minutes into this unless they need to see a specific mission, and then they're probably not going to be listening to any audio anyway, they just want to see the, the nitty gritty. Just meat, no buns. <clears throat> and I have been playing this new... It's not really a game, it's more of just... I guess a social media app on my phone. It's called Miitomo. It's by Nintendo. You get to make a me and then they read everything off to you in a computer voice that you get to customize all the pitch and depth of the voice. It's pretty cool. And then you answer questions about yourself and then your friends get to comment on those. I mean, it's still a little glitchy since it's only been out in North America for, I think, a couple days now. So, I don't actually see all of my friends' answers as they're, like, updating them throughout the day. I only It only updates, like, one or two people overnight. So, I hope they fix that soon, because it's a really fun app. It also lets you take pictures and plop your me of yourself down into the world. It's really entertaining. Uh, if you do want to add me on that, you can... I guess you have to add me on Twitter first. So there's not really any other way to do that. Now I do have my a link to my Twitter in the description there, so you should be able to find that pretty easily. Now I know I sound pretty monotone and not very exciting in real life, but over text message and through the internet, I'm fucking hilarious, let me tell you. Another game I started playing, I think yesterday, is called Smite. They just uh, put it on the PS4 recently for free, so that's pretty cool. It's basically like League of Legends, which I played up until like one or two years ago. I was pretty good. I think I was gold 5, so not like excellent excellent, but I wasn't terrible. But yeah, I was thinking of maybe streaming that when I'm not doing these videos. That might be f another fun activity, a good hobby to have. I mean, the graphics aren't like beautiful, but what can you expect from a free game, right? And I mean, I stopped playing League of Legends because they didn't really ever come out with any new game modes or anything that fun to do. Like, they had certain events on for like a week maybe, like Earth Mode and... Uh, what was that other one? One for All, yeah, that one was pretty fun too, but they never really came out with any new maps or anything, 
And I was like, Summoner's Rift is rad and all, but I would like to see some new places. And they just would release new champions. There was one point when they were releasing like a new champion a week. It was ridiculous. We are on site and in position. I mean, at least all of the art for the champions was really cool. I guess in this smite game, the champions are called gods. <laughs> I've only played a couple characters so far, but it was pretty neat. Kind of hectic though, and the camera's pretty radical. It spins around like a maniac on you. But at least the bright side to that is that everybody probably has issues with camera speed and whatnot. I probably could go into the options and turn it down somewhere, but where's the fun in that? It does have this pretty cool auto-buy feature where even before you start a game you can go into the menu for a specific gods and set up build item builds for them before you're even playing so that while you're playing when you go back to your summoning platform I don't know if that's what it's called oh, a fountain I think it's called a fountain in this game but yeah when you go back to the fountain it'll automatically buy the items that you had listed in your your thingamahoozit previously and same with skills you can tell it to auto-upgrade all your different skills. I mean, they've probably added features like these to League of Legends. I haven't actually played it in a few months. I usually just play ARAMs when I do play because they're pretty fun and entertaining. <laughs> if anybody does want to add me on League and play some ARAMs, my name is Pikachu Hat, same as my PSN. I generally try to use Pikachu hat everywhere, keep it uniform. And if you're wondering where that actually came from, I did not skin a Pikachu or anything brutal like that. I just got my mom to knit me a Pikachu hat with ears on it for Anime North one year. Well, one year. Made a tail out of cardboard, it was pretty entertaining. I think that was in grade 9 or 10. It was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, Anime North was pretty cool, but I just buy everything on the internet now. Don't have to deal with crowds. Well, only a couple missions left now. We are almost done the Garment District area. What is that? Two left? So this is the boss mission of the side quest area. Every area will have one of these missions where you have to go take out the first and second lieutenants and then a boss. And I do have to be a little careful with these guys because they are the same level as me right now. So, I do take a lot of damage pretty quickly. But yeah, if you hadn't noticed before, this is my LMG. Its recoil is pretty ridiculous, so I don't 
like to use it that often, but it does have that giant ass cliff I was talking about. So that's a pretty good example. I don't really know what to call these guys, but they have that little wrench icon and they like to make turrets a lot. If they are being pesky and hiding on you, you can shoot their turret a couple times and they will try to come back over and repair it. Or you can just destroy it outright and try and get them when they put up a new one. Speeding through the hallway. Now if anybody doesn't like the speeding up of the video, uh, you can let me know. Uh, I don't mind changing it, just skipping over those parts entirely. Uh, I personally don't really like transitions that much, so I try to avoid using them too often. I mean, they're kind of fun now and then, especially Star Wars wipes, who doesn't love a good Star Wars wipe? Speaking of Star Wars, uh, Episode 7 just came out on DVD. Uh, I had it pre-ordered because I am a Star Wars fanatic. Now I know a lot of people hate all of the new movies that they've been making since Episode 1. But I personally enjoy them since I got to see episode 1 in theaters as a small child. It has a lot of nostalgic meaning for me, so... Fuck the haters, man. Plus, being a small child, I didn't care too much about storyline. I just fast forwarded through all the movies to the fight scenes because fuck yeah fight scenes I would say one of my goals in life is to find one of the most beautifully animated fight scenes and of all time I guess <laughs> Some of the greatest ones I've seen are in a movie called The Sword of the Stranger, or The Stranger's Sword. I'm not sure on the exact translation since it is a Japanese movie in the first place, but it is beautiful. I would definitely recommend watching that. It's probably one of my all-time favorite movies of all, all time. Wow, I'm repetitive. <laughs> We are on the last mission now. I'll try and wrap this up pretty quickly. Warning. Hostile presence detected. Yeah, and in the next video we will be going back to Hudson Yards to do the next story mission. For some reason they did decide to put two story missions in a couple of the areas and leave like the last two areas as only side missions so that's probably going to be a pretty boring chunk of this video series but at least we'll get through all of the story content before then and you can decide to not watch those I hope everybody had a good Easter last weekend. I totally forgot all about it, so didn't mention it at all last week. But yeah, happy Easter if you're into that. 
and I will see all y'all tomorrow. Agent, there's something back here for you. I can only say that regardless...